My name is Natalie Salter, and I'm working with Wella and Sebastian Professional um, Sebastian Cutting Techniques, or have been to a Sebastian Cutting class, or any type of Sebastian class. Well, then, hopefully, I'll inspire all of you since there was only two that raised your hand. Um, so, I'm going to bring out my module today because this is the haircut that I'm going to be showing you on the mannequin head. Nadia, can you come up? So, with Nadia, she came in today, it was one of those things that we all hoped. Um, she wanted a lot of length off, so her hair was down to here. So I was able to cut a lot off, which is always really fun for us. And she wanted a textured bob. And she has beautiful, beautiful hair that is um, very soft, straight, and can be weighed down. So the techniques that I used on her is really going to help her to be able to get that movement and texture in her hair. So as you can see, um, I did add some waves in there, and I'm also going to show you guys how you can these type of texture waves. Um, but spinning her around, um, you can see that if I were to go through and kind of smooth this out and she were to wear her hair straight, it could look very seamless and not necessarily really layered. But now that I have all this texture in there from the techniques that I did with this fashion cutting, um, I'm allow, it allows me to give volume and movement within the hair without actually feeling like there's a lot of layers in the hair, which is really nice because we all want what layers give us, but we don't necessarily want layers, right? So the benefits of layers would be to create texture or volume, um, to create different shapes in the hair, to remove some bulk as well. So with the techniques that I'm going to be showing you today, you can do all of that, but have a much more seamless look like she has with creating um, a lot of movement in the hair too. You guys like this? Yes. Yeah. Okay, you can go ahead and stay back. And then you can stay back there. They want you later, I'll bring you back. Thank you. It was super long. We always want, you know, when she was telling me how much she was willing to go, I was like, okay, like here. You know, like you asked several times because when someone comes to you and is willing to cut that much off, and it was the first time meeting her, I wanted to really make sure that really wanted that much off, you know? Okay, so I'm going to do half of this head on the mannequin. And as you can see, and you guys know, using mannequin heads, their hair texture is a lot different than hers was. So their her, her hair texture is a lot more fine, a little wiry, but it's still safe to use a feather plane. So with fashion, we're going to be using um, the feather plane. You guys use this at all? Yes. Feather blade is amazing. So um, with this, I use all fresh blades, and I always have my fresh blades with me at all times, and my little dispenser to get rid of the blades in there. One of um, the main things, because there are a lot of things why people are afraid to use the blade, right? So a lot of times we'll have those clients get the blade out and they like dodge the blade, you know, like <laughs> dodging products or they're scared of it. So one of the things I like to say um, is just not get to, not laugh at them, but just be understanding because they're coming from a certain, they're doing that for some reason. So I always ask them like, why are you so afraid of the blade? Like what, you know, and they're usually going to say, it's been used on them before and they hated it or they didn't like, you know, it was a bad haircut. And then I'll ask them if they've ever had a bad haircut with shears. And probably 90, I feel safe to say 99% of the time we've all had a bad haircut. Um, so most likely they're going to say yes. And in that point, you're able to tell them it wasn't necessarily the tool that was being used, it was the way that the tool was being used on them. Because majority of the time, I any hair texture may be fine, may be curly, thick, anything, I feel 
completely confident and safe using a blade on their hair. It's just whether or not the end result um, with the blade is what you want to achieve. So when I get into cutting, I'll be able to kind of show you guys more of what that can do. But that's kind of a good way to help the clients to allow you to be able to use the feather blade on them. Um, and then also uh, letting them know that how good this could be on their hair and the reasons why you're using, wanting to use it on them. Um, and maybe even just cutting their fringe or around their face that day. Well, let me try just your framing your face with the blade and see if you like it. And a lot of times they'll come back and really love how their hair lay and worked um, by those little pieces that you did use the feather blade on them. And then they'll come back and feel more confident and allow you to do a full haircut using that. And sometimes I'm only using the blade for uh, techniques, you know, a little personalization and not necessarily the full haircut. Um, I did use the blade, uh, the whole haircut for Nadia, and I also did some shear cutting too as well. Okay, so to get into it, how are you guys doing? Are you having a fun day? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. I'm like kind of hoping that I could go around to the rooms too, but I didn't have time. It's prepping. And if you guys need to, feel free to come up and see more closely. I am going to move from side to side so that way you, can, you guys can all get the best visual. But feel free to come up. I'm going to split her head into two. So I'll explain to you while I'm doing it how I would normally part if it were to be, if I was going to be doing the full head. I'm doing half because I'm going to be doing some chatting and then I also want to get into styling as well with you guys. So prepping her hair, you can cut with the feather blade um, damp to dry. But you can also cut on dry, which I know is one of those things. Even when I got into cutting more with the razor, I realized um, it was usually like, you don't want to cut on dry hair. You know, like that was a big, like I had to get over that fear, you know, like in preschool school where you are like trained to not pick up a dirty comb, you know, that hits the floor. Like I was trained to not cut a razor on dry hair. But then I realized um, with Sebastian when I got into their hair cutting techniques that you really can. Um, the way that you can is to prep the hair nicely. So you can see her hair is very smooth and it's very much to the natural fall. So I did a really nice wrap dry. So that way I'm not forcing the hair to go any way that it doesn't want to go. So you are able to cut with the blade if the hair is prepped very nicely and very smooth, almost like it would be if the hair was wet. So what I'm going to do is you're starting in the back. And really this part, we have specific sectioning. But we all know everybody has different hair, so it's going to adjust to that. So starting out in the back, you really want, um, depending on if you're wanting diagonal forward or not, usually with the skimming, I like to start parallel um, with the ground. So <coughs> this amount of hair, like about an inch, depending on how much hair, sometimes people are really dense back here. So this actually might end up being two sections for someone that has a lot of hair. Um, with the mannequin head, I'm going to take this into one section. And I'm going to be doing a skimming technique. So with skimming, you're going to be taking your blade and you're literally going to be taking, um, this is the hair, and taking the blade and skimming up and down on the hair. So the pressure that you're using is very crucial. 
and also the movement that you're using too. So uh, let me do a section and then I'll explain more about how I did that section. So I'll do this side first and then I'll switch So I'm always going to hold a section that is as big as the blade, a little less than that. And for me, I have smaller hands too, so I like to take a little smaller section. And so I'm going to have pretty good tension right here, and I'm going to be skimming up and down and up and down, and I'm not necessarily always going to that same spot. It's very fluid up and down. And a key note when you're texturizing any type of way in the hair is if you push the hair back into the head like this, it kind of creates like a C shape, right? So wherever that C shape ends is where you want to start texturizing. If I were to texturize above that C shape, then this hair is going to just stick straight out. Now there are some times where you do want to have shorter texture in there, and so that can you can have, you can go against that rule. But a general um, note is to not texturize past um, that C section. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to take my blade. And I actually like to do a couple strokes before I even apply pressure on to the hair. And then I'm slowly applying pressure onto the hair, going up and down. And when I'm applying um, the pressure, I'm only applying the pressure when I'm coming down. I'm not applying the pressure when I'm going back up, but I am keeping my blade on the hair just so that way I'm not coming back onto the hair. Because if I was coming back onto the hair, it would leave more of like an indentation. So I wanted the, I want the skimming to be very fluid, and so that's why I'm keeping um, my blade on the hair at all times. I'm not cutting when I'm going up. And then depending on where you want the length, just start to apply a little bit more pressure wherever you want that length at. And you can always go back through um, with the shear and create that. But see how seamless that is? But then when I go to play with it, it has a lot of texture and movement in there. But then it's very seamless. So I actually could do this. If someone wanted a really blunt cut, um, you could go through and do like a sheer cut and make the ends really blunt. Um, and then go back to use the skimming technique just to remove weight, um, but to keep the perimeter really blunt. This is going to give it more of um, a piece of texture bottom. So again, taking this, getting the rhythm, and then starting to remove that weight. And I am applying really, really light pressure. So thinking about having a razor blade on a balloon <coughs> shaving, shaving cream off of, you want a light pressure. You don't want to be able to push into that balloon because the balloon is going to pop. If I push into this too hard, then it's really going to just chop off the hair exactly where I put that strong pressure. So it's really about creating that fluid um, movement. Uh, I like to, like, when I've done this before, um, thinking about the way that you're moving your hand. So think about, like, listening to, like, R&B music while you're cutting versus, like, techno. So you're really going to want, you know, like, R&B movement. Music is very, you know, kids get that. So it's very like, I don't even know, but everybody knows the, you know, the movement. Um, besides, or thinking about like techno music. So techno music would be more, you know, so thinking about that rhythm that you're getting with while you're skimming. Um, I just always think of our music. I don't know. It makes sense, you know? 
Did you say that you started the skimming uh, at the bottom of the sea? Yes, you, underneath, the bottom, it. underneath. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I don't want it to stick out too much, um, depending on their hair texture. But yes, good question. I did start at the bottom of the sink. And so now I'm going to take this next section. I always kind of like to play with the section to see if I have enough of the skimming in there. And then I'm going to take the next section down. And the next section, you want enough of the next section that you're not skimming into your previous section. So I'm not going to be touching that previous section, um, almost like freeing and painting in a sense. When you bring that section down and you're not painting all the way through the hair, that's what this technique is as far as your parting. So you're gonna bring that next section down and I'm gonna be skimming on the top of that section until it meets to the underneath section. So you can actually take this section and the, uh, the section underneath kind of drops out. So again, I'm starting. So this technique is really awesome because, like I said, it's layering the hair, but layering it in a seamless way. So if you think about the way that shears cut, shears are going to cut straight across the hair. And you're going to have like that circular diameter at the end of the hair, where with a right, uh, razor blade, you're going to have a diagonal. And so it's going to already create a softness for you, thinking about like how they cut like a burrito at a diagonal and how much is exposed there. And it's softer than what it would be if you're cutting with a shear, which is going to be straight across. And then on top of that, while you're skimming, you're not already, you're already creating a softness with the blade because it's cutting at a diagonal, but you're creating even more softness because usually when we um, create layering, we have hair on top of hair like this, and we have um, almost like a little shelter. You can point cut and it can blend in there. Um, but what this does is it actually creates a layering that's within each other. So you're creating this seamlessness. So now the hair is all going to be one together and not have um, like layers per se. Which I love because like on my hair, I have, I skim my hair um, a lot because I have enough hair that I can. And I really like that what the skimming does because it creates a lightness in the hair. Um, because my hair is heavy, so I like to create the lightness in there, but I also like the way that it's creating a layer without having my hair look like it's layered. Because if my hair wasn't layered or wasn't skim cut or back cut, um, it would just be too much, and that's how a lot of people's hair is. So depending on their hair texture really depends on the pressure that you're applying when you're skim cutting. So if you are trying to remove weight, you are going to be able to apply more pressure onto your skim cutting. If you're not wanting to remove weight, say I'm doing it more on fine hair, almost just like this mannequin head, um, I am actually going to be applying even lighter of pressure because it can create volume too because I'm creating texture that's going to create like this lightness in hair. So that's why you can use this technique on heavy hair, thick hair, curly hair, fine hair, all of those. It just um, really kind of depends on your pressure and how much pressure you're applying. Because if I'm applying more pressure, then I'm taking on more weight. So I'm taking this next section. And I'm actually going to take this section, since it comes around to the ear, I'm actually going to take it over that way too. Do this first. Transfer it over. You guys are able to see? Let me come up here. I'll come up here and do a couple of things. So you guys can all see it. I'll do one this way. Is that good? And then I'll do one this way too. Okay. 
So you can see in here, I'm creating a bunch of different um, layers in there. It's not all being cut off at the same area, but then when I smooth it out, you can't see any of that layering in there. Sometimes I'll actually um, only do skim cutting underneath the occipital. So if you have someone, sometimes people have really thick hair right underneath um, the occipital. I just said it. Now it's like now I said it bad, so now I can't say it. Um, so they have really thick hair underneath here, and a lot of times people will want like an undercut. And, but sometimes people are kind of skeptical about getting an undercut. So I'll do the skimming technique like this, and you, you could do it a lot stronger um, in this sense, and then bring everything down and just do the normal haircut that you were going to do everywhere else. So you could just do this technique everywhere underneath, even in the horseshoe section. You could do everything underneath, do all this skimming and then go back through and just do whatever haircut you were going to do um, before that. And that's going to help remove weight out of their hair. So I'm going to bring this section around. And so now I'm going to be on the top, also to the side too. So I'll bring this back. And again, if you guys want, you can come up and so I'm bringing this section around to the front now, and I'm just going to continue skimming. So say I um, don't necessarily want to create elevation, but I want to create that texture in there. So now that I'm getting past the round of the head, I could actually start my skimming a little lower, depending on how much you want their hair to collapse. So I don't necessarily have to, usually when I'm skimming, I'm taking, uh, I start to skim like an inch and a half to two inches down from the root. So now that I'm actually getting to the round of the head, I think what I'm going to do and what I did um, on my model is I started to bring my skimming down to underneath the round of the head. So that way it's more collapsed underneath there and then that's when you get like that messy um, textured look. So I'm going to start my skimming a little lower. And again, checking your skimming, you can really um, just know by texture, um, by lifting that hair up. So you never want to hear your blade, and you never want to feel that pull with the blade. So I know that when I start to hear it, or even start to feel a little bit of a pull, I'm going to change my blade. How many haircuts can I get out of a blade? Uh, I would probably say only one, and usually I'm switching it within that one, depending on the hair texture. So I started Nadia, um, I had like a half good blade um, from here down when I first started her, and then I switched blades and I was able to finish the whole rest of the haircut. Um, because I'm not using my blade as much once I get up higher into the hair. And so now once I get to this side area, you 
aren't going to skim as much because the hair is going to be a lot weaker um, around the, air, the ear and even around the face. So again, I still want to get that skimming technique in, but my pressure is very, very light. Another good way to check for your skimming, whether or not you have a good amount in there, is to actually push the hair into each other, and it should Velcro kind of into each other like that. Um, if it's not doing that, then you know that you might need a little bit more skimming into there. This is one way to be able to kind of check your work. And also just kind of lifting it up and feeling that lightness, because usually if you have enough skimming, you're going to feel a lightness as far as what the hair is falling down after lifting it up. If you need more skimming in there, it's kind of going to just like flop. Fine hair? No, it is recommended for fine hair. It's just what their end result wants to be. 
So I like to use it on fine hair because it is going to create volume within the hair. Um, but if you're doing it on someone that already has curly, frizzy hair and their main complaint is that they don't want it more airy and light, then I wouldn't use um, the blade on them, per se. Or if you have someone that does have somewhat of, like my mom, she has like half of her hair is curly and the other half isn't. Um, but she likes to smooth her hair out. So I don't do any um, of the razor or even any layering because the top part of her hair is the part that's straight. And she likes to use the weight of that to help smooth her hair out. So if someone is basically thinking about what their end result or what their priority is, I would use the feather blade um, on my mom, especially within this top section, because I know she likes that weight for her to help her to style it. Does that make sense? So yeah, it's all about who you're using it on and what you're using it on for. Question. So yeah. Are you always keeping the um, blade horizontal with the part? Horizontal with the so part. So you've got your part here, and so the blade is always going to be with the part? Oh, yes, yes. Good question. She's asking if I'm keeping the blade um, horizontal with my parting. When it comes to skimming, yes, you're keeping the blade horizontal with your parting, so that way you can keep that section. Um, basically, whatever you're sectioning, you're keeping um, the blade going with that. Okay, so now I'm going to do pen cutting. Yes. Would you have more split ends if you use the razor? The, no. That's not she asked good. if you'd have more split ends if you use the razor. So one thing thinking about is the way that the blade cuts. Like I said, like that burrito opening, if you're cutting at a diagonal, more of the hair diameter is going to be exposed. So thinking about the texture of the hair or the way that that person takes care of their hair, it might end up, well, not necessarily. It's just basically the way that that person takes care of their hair. Would or you recommend like a sealer the for the ends? A what? special? Is there any special sealer for the ends after the haircut? Um, I always like to use like a gloss, a treatment, like actual color, like a clear gloss, thinking of it like almost like a top nail polish. It wouldn't be like stripping the hair in half when you're racering it and it would create yeah. the, the more slit It's all more, about prepping the right. hair really nicely um, and also making sure your blade is really fresh and also make sure your, your technique that you're doing is really nice and gentle. That is why you get a new blade and yes, yes, always blade. using a new fresh blade. Yeah. What if you want it to be a little fuller at the top, like because the hers is flat as well, and then this is like pretty thin. If you want it to be fuller on the top, then like what? within the top crown, like around this area, mm -hmm. because that was a little like just fuller at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Like you're kind of like it seems like it's thinning it out more. Where at? Um, well, I mean, the, the weight of this up in here yeah, is yeah, yeah. pulling it down. So you could skim up higher then. So skimming um, above the round of the head. Wherever you're going to skim is going to create volume and lift. So you are able to skim up higher about an inch to an inch and a half from the root, wherever on the head. I'm just doing more of the skimming down here because I'm creating more of like that textured bob that can look like a seamless bob, but can also um, have a lot of texture on those mid lengths and ends. Yeah. But if you wanted to create more of like that lift, like with my hair, I take the horseshoe section and I do skimming all on the hair from the bottom to the top of that horseshoe section. And I'm skimming all the way an inch and a half to two inches from the top of that hair and bringing it down. And that's what's going to create more of that lift in the crown area. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Raise your hand if you ask a question. <laughs> so now I'm going to be doing a pen cutting technique. 
So when you're doing the pen cutting technique, you're literally taking your feather blade and you're holding it like a pen. And like literally I'd be able to like write my signature on my hand. And what I'm going to be doing with that is I'm going to be taking the hair over top and I'm just going to take this and kind of stick my blade into the hair and turn it a little bit and nicely curve out sections. This technique is great for curly hair um, because you're able to create um, spaces and openings so that way the curls have more of their own area to live and it's not just um, curly hair all in one section so this technique is really great um, on curly hair. And you're just taking your blade, sticking it into that section, and really being artistic with it. Normally what I'm going to be doing with this is when you pull the hair out on that section, you can really see those highs and lows in the hair by the density. So wherever it's really thick, you can go in there and use your pen cutting that out um, and then if it's less dense in some places you don't have to do your pen cutting in there so this is going to kind of merge the bottom skin cutting with the top and again feeling with that texture where you want to add more or less to it It's after what? Um, she's asking if you skim after or before. It really um, depends on what you're doing. Usually I'm doing pen cutting after. Because pen cutting is going to um, start with skim cutting because I'm going to be able to take that off the bulk then. I'll show you guys on this side. No, you can do it. You can be done on dry hair. Well, but visibly for you guys to be able to see what these techniques do um, is a lot easier on a uh, on dry hair. If you want to do a graduated uh, back, you just skim higher. If I wanted to do a graduated graduate. Yes. If I wanted to do a graduated skimming on the back, what I would do is actually graduate my skimming too. So what I did is I brought my skimming back down to the previous section. If I wanted to create graduation, then I would keep skimming up until that high point on the head. Did that answer your question? Um, yeah, I guess so. Yes. Mm -hmm. For this haircut, it's uh, slightly longer from the front, right? Slightly. Not, I mean, not really. Because when you style her, it looks on like On her, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, on her. Because the model slightly. had, the, the doll had it, like, layered from the front already. Yeah, she was already layered. You can. I'm just using all of the feather blade. She asked if I'm doing any sheer cutting. And like I said, I could go through and do a whole haircut. Say I'm doing like my whole graduated bob, however I'm doing it very precise sectioning. And then I go back through and I'm using these techniques to create movement and remove weight. Instead of um, using your shears and doing a bunch of point cutting, I could go back through and just do the pen cutting technique if I wanted to. So I'm finishing up this last section. <coughs> and Natalie, I know you're going to be wrapping it up in a minute or two. I uh, uh -huh. just want to let everyone know that's when we'll do the raffle and explain what happens next. <laughs> So I'm just feeling for weight and texture. Do your pen cutting. And that helps kind of merge um, the underlying skimming that we did underneath with the top. So that way you 
don't have, um, you know, it helps kind of blend those men together. It's just like what? She asked if it's like point cutting, but I'm taking it higher. It slightly is like point cutting, but what I'm going, I'm going to be able to move more of the weight, and I'm going to be able to move more of the weight in more random spots than I am with point cutting, and I can go up a little higher. With point cutting, you only have so much that you can point cut into. So I'm just going to curl her hair really quick, and I'll show you guys a really awesome, easy way to curl using Shaper. So Shaper is really lightweight hairspray, and it has a dry, brushable feel to it, which I like because it creates like that texture in the hair as well. So what I'm doing is I'm just going through and spraying the sections thoroughly before I go through the curl on the top and the bottom. And it's very brushable, so this doesn't, I'm not afraid that I'm not going to be able to run my fingers through this after I've applied the product on there. So now I'm just going to take my sections, and I like to start in the back. Sometimes with the back, you don't even really have to um, curl that area, depending on how short it is. Sometimes I like to just get a little bit of a bend in there, but a lot of times I'll make sure to tell my clients, like, you don't even have to curl the back, you know? Like, just, you can get that look if you're just curling in everything from the crown up to. So in the back area, I'm just going to do a little bit of a movement. And then one of the things that I like to do um, when I'm curling is after I put the curl in, I'm only doing it in the middle area, I'm going to pull through. So that way it doesn't keep like that rule. I'm using a small iron, but I'm pulling on it before the curl dries, so that way it's bringing that curl back down and it's not super curled like, you know, you would on, I don't know, you know, the cliche curls. This is going to give it more of like that beach wave look. And you did the end out, right? This section, I'm going to curl the other way, and I'm leaving the end out, and I'm just curling that middle, and I'm going to kind of pull through that curl after I finish it. going the opposite way through the whole section that I'm doing. <coughs> and what that's going to do is it's going to create like that beach wave look. So even when I get up to the front, I used to be kind of skeptical about curling towards the face when I get to the front just because I prefer my hair to be going away from the face. But really to get like that beach wave look, you want to be able to have each section going back and forth because this section is going this way, so all these curls are going to go that way. This next section is going to be going the opposite way, and so now these curls are going to live in between the curls underneath, and that's what creates like that back and forth like beachy look. If we do the curls all the same way, it creates a wave that's kind of going all the same way. So that's why you want to go through and do your curls um, every other way. So this last one was going towards you guys. So this section, I'm going to take it away from you guys. And Natalie, to save on time, I know we got to, some people have to get out of here. Uh, what we'll do is in the next minute or so, we'll let you finish, and then you can continue to curl while I. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm going to turn on the main lights for everybody. <laughs> My name is Natalie Salter, and I'm working with Wella and Smash and Professionals.